The blizzard continues in the open areas in central and northeastern portions of South Dakota. Sioux Falls, of course, we missed out on the snow, but not the winds. It's going to be windy overnight tonight, low of 20 degrees. Aberdeen near record cold, low of 5. Pier near record cold, a low of 7 with clear skies at Rapid City 10. Then during the day tomorrow, we're going to start to warm things up as that system pulls away. Sioux Falls tomorrow, sunny skies, 48 degrees. Thanks to snow cover, Aberdeen only at 24. Here, mostly sunny 29, Rapid City 39 degrees, but it's going to be even warmer for the upcoming weekend. Details on that coming up. Kelloland News starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News first at four. We take a look at the cleanup efforts in western Kelloland after a winter storm dumps even more snow in the region. Plus, what we know so far about an arrest this morning in Sioux Falls that led to a few officers being hurt. And later, we'll introduce you to this year's winner of the 7th Annual Mash Madness event in downtown Sioux Falls. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. People across Kelloland are once again shoveling and snow blowing after this week's winter storm brought a couple feet of snow to some areas. Incredible. In Rapid City today, neighbors are helping each other out to clear their driveways and sidewalks. The city got nearly a foot of snow in some parts of town. Just kind of working on this, this little patch here for about the past 20 minutes. And I figure I got, I don't know, a good 20 minutes ahead of me. I just need to be able to get one car out. So we'll see how it goes from there. Coming up tonight on Kettleland News at 6, we're going to talk with neighbors and the Rapid City Street crews about, yet again, digging out from another snowstorm. And I-29 is expected to stay closed between Watertown and the North Dakota border through tonight. This is due to the strong winds, low visibility, and drifting snow. There are also no travel advisories on highways across the northeastern part of South Dakota. This morning, the Brookings County Sheriff's Office said many roads were icy. Vehicles weren't able to get up hills or lost control. Law enforcement is urging people to stay off the roads. If you have to drive somewhere, slow down and make sure you have your headlights turned on. Authorities say that a tornado that tore through southeastern Missouri left several people dead and caused widespread destruction. The Missouri State Highway Patrol says that the tornado moved through a rural area this morning. So far, they have confirmed five deaths with several other people injured. The National Weather Service says that a tornado was on the ground for about 15 minutes. A tornado was also reported near Pleasantville, Iowa last night. Look at that. The video shows a storm cloud beginning to form near Ple uh, Pleasantville, which is in the south center part of Iowa. Over time, a thick rope-like cloud began spinning over that area. Residents described the moment uh, the tornado hit. It got close. We could see that there was actually stuff in the clouds spinning and at that point we just it just felt really strange all of a sudden it was quiet i mean people say it sounds like a train it was actually very very quiet and uh, we ran downstairs and then looked at our basement windows we could just see everything flying everywhere this was part of a large system from the midwest to the south that brought strong winds hail and flooding unfortunately more storms are expected to hammer parts of the midwest and the south in the coming days. That's scary wow. stuff. Yeah, it's been a real active weather pattern, hasn't it? Yeah, and it makes the snow seem uh, not so bad when you see that destruction. Bearable, for sure. Megan? Well, guys, I do have some good news in the way of the seven-day forecast, but first we have to get through the next couple of hours with that winter storm still hitting the northeast corner of South Dakota. Sioux Falls missed out on the snow, but still in those strong west winds right now at 25 miles an hour and thick clouds. But Aberdeen, after 11 inches of snow, does have sunshine. Those west winds right now at 26 miles an hour with some even higher wind gusts. Pierce saw 14 inches of snow. Right now, northwest winds at 26 miles an hour, but plenty of blue sky. And Rapid City, 27 degrees this afternoon. Blue skies and just a very light breeze. We do have a few snow showers in northeastern Kelloland between Aberdeen, Sisseton, and Watertown. And that with those very strong winds of 30 to even 40 miles an hour wind gusts means we still have a winter weather advisory for those areas in blue and a blizzard warning for those areas in white with very little new snow accumulation, but very heavy blowing snow. 
Here's a look at some of our other snow reports. Hot Springs had 30 inches of snow. Pier, like I said, 14. Rapid City saw 12.8. Mount Rushmore got a foot of snow. Sisseton saw around 10 inches. And Millbank, only four and a half. For tonight, we'll have near record low temperatures in Aberdeen and Pier. Five Aberdeen, 20 in Sioux Falls, seven in Pier, and 10 in Rapid City. Then the sun comes out tomorrow. There will be light winds, 48 Sioux Falls, 24 in Aberdeen, 29 in Pier, and 39 in Rapid City. And then Friday in the weekend looks to be even warmer. We'll have those details in just a little bit. Thanks, Megan. An Aberdeen sex offender is back behind bars accused of sexually abusing a child. According to court documents, Kenneth Vance is charged with rape, incest, sexual exploitation of a minor, and having a childlike sex doll. Court papers say the victim is younger than 13 years old. In 2012, Vance was convicted of having child pornography. His next court appearance in this case is scheduled for April 25th. Iowa lawmakers passed an amended version of Governor Kim Reynolds' education bill. The bill requires school districts to post all curriculum materials online. It also includes a mechanism to remove books from libraries that contain graphic depictions of sexual acts. The legislation would also restrict education on gender identity and sexual orientation in grades K through 6. Parents send their children to school to learn reading, math, and writing. When they do this, they are putting trust into the school and the staff there. Unfortunately, some of that trust has been broken due to schools pushing wokeism. There is no one size fits all for book selection. My rights and parents' rights are being trampled if someone else is deciding for me what my child can read. The bill also removes the requirement for education on vaccinations for HPV and HIV viruses. The legislation now goes back to the Iowa Senate. Five more South Dakotans who had COVID-19 have died, according to this week's update from the state health department. Since the pandemic started nearly started three years ago, 3,214 people have died in the state. Health officials confirmed more than 400 new cases over the last week. Right now, there are 327 people infected with the virus, which is down slightly from last week. Currently, there are 48 coronavirus patients in South Dakota hospitals.